Um, before we get into some of the ethics focused questions, could you just speak a little bit about the trajectory of your career? I mean, I read in the research that you started as a child of the Cultural Revolution, mm -hmm. and now uh, you are working with incredible creativity in all aspects of your work, mm -hmm. and also perhaps select a few themes um, that you'd like to emphasize, and in particular, one that has emerged um, seemingly um, throughout your body of work is how we see things, how human beings see things. 其实一个一个人喜欢艺术，最早其实都是从喜欢涂鸦、喜欢在纸上这个涂抹而开始的。他享受一种这个呃动手和涂写的快感。呃，小的时候，所以就喜欢艺术，这个喜欢画画。但是后来，我发现，我现在做的艺术和那个时候最原初的对艺术的兴趣，好像是两个东西。当然了，在中国，这个，呃，作为一个艺术家，其实呢，他确实是一个很特殊的一个一个成长的过程。相对来说，他也是一个被动的过程。我们这一代人没有选择，也不会选择，因为呢，所有都是由国家安排的。我的对绘画的兴趣和对书法的兴趣。其实很大程度来自于文革的一个时期。So it's very interesting because I personally am a very big fan of Chinese culture. I should say I'm a student of Chinese culture and a student of Chinese language because it's very humbling to try to learn about it.、Um, but what you seem to have done recently is not only to show that the artist has choice,、um, but that you have a choice about how you engage outside of China, including. Um, with the West, and you spent some time in New York, and、uh, you've spent some time. Obviously, you have a lot of time here. So, how has your、uh, time outside of China in New York changed the way you think about the trajectory of your career and the kinds of works that you do today? Actually, Susan, just now, this so-called choice, I really think that we are not forced to choose. Because the reality, or say, the 历史的时间段，让我们这一代在中国成长的艺术家呢，好像是活了好几辈子，因为我们有这个很早期的社会主义的经验，同时呢又有这个有 you know, 文化大革命的经验，同时呢又有这个文革以后的改革开放的一个经验与西方接触的经验，同时呢我们又这个直接参与到。一个全球的一个文化或者说文明发展的一个阶段啊，当然现在呢，这个中国又进入了另外一个非常特殊的一个一个一个时期，嗯，所以呢，我就感觉我们这辈子比较幸运的就是这一辈子活了好几辈子啊，所以呢，我觉得不用选择，就是历史让你，呃，给你安排了一个非常特殊和丰富的一个呃生活历程。I can't imagine a more perfect statement、uh, at this particular juncture in history.、Um, I'm coming from the perspective of the United States, where, as you know, we have President Trump. But along with that, we have the Oxford Dictionaries saying that the most used new word of 2016 is "post-truth." And、um, you mentioned earlier in our conversation that you, you sort of, in your lifetime, in your career trajectory, you rode the wave of history. Well, I can't imagine a more appropriate time to be talking about how we cannot hide from the truth and how art exposes the truth,、uh, whether we try or, to hide or not.、Yeah. If we could come back to、um, one of the pillars of ethics, which is making decisions based on values, can you speak a little bit about where you get your own values, or as I might describe it, your true north that helps you guide your decisions in your life and in your career? Do you get your values from family? Um, from art, from religion, from other sources, where do you get your core principles or core values? 当然，这个价值观呢，我觉得是，其实很复杂的啦。啊，就是任何一个微小的信息都可能会影响你的一个价值观，嗯，或者影响你对事情的判断。呃，我其实，在路上在看你的这个问题，所以我在在想，这个到底我的价值观是从哪儿来的啊？呃呃，我在想呢，其实，呃，我的很多的价值观一定是从父母这儿来的，特别是从母亲这儿来的啊，因为呢，他的价值观又是从哪儿来的呢
。实际上，我是觉得他的价值观呢，是从他的一个非常佛教的一个呃家庭来的。当然，除此之外呢，我觉得我们这一代人的很多的价值观呢，其实来自于。早期的社会主义的一个共产主义的价值观，嗯，当然这些社会主义和共产主义的价值观呢，它实际上是通过当时毛泽东树立的一些英雄的这个行为而对我们这个的影响。我觉得这些所谓英雄的行为，其实是成为我们。在成长过程中的一个榜样，这是我们一生，就是我们那个时期，努力成为这样的一个人的一个 model。当然呢，还有一些等我们更成熟一些的时候，在文革的后期呢，其实我们能够看到个别的苏联的，就是前苏联的，或者说这个欧洲的一些小说，就这小说是很有限的，这么几本比如说有一本叫《牛虻》。啊，呃，还有是什么钢铁是怎样炼成的？这样的一些，这个前苏联的一些小说的东西，这些东西其实基本上都是这种，它背后都是基督教的一种对自己的一种自虐和惩罚性的一种一种价值观，一种人生准则。这个东西对我们有一定的影响，但是这个东西和中国的这个社会主义时期树立的这些英雄呢？其实内在有一种共同的东西了。Were there particular novels, or indeed are there today particular leaders in any field who you think are wonderful role models from an ethical decision-making perspective? People who do what they do well, but also ethically. 真正对我的这个道德准则有影响的，我觉得可能更多的不是艺术作品，嗯，而或者说文学作品。呃，我觉得更多的是现实生活中的，呃，周边的事情，或者说有些是很小的一些事情，嗯。